Scorpions frontman Klaus Meiner, actress and singer Jeanette Biederman, and gallery owner Gerd Harry Dübke. Their lives were shaped each in a different way by the fall of the Berlin Wall 25 years ago. Klaus Meiner in front of the Brandenburg Gate in Berlin. The political events inspired the Scorpions frontman to pen his greatest hit, Wind of Change. It became an anthem for the collapse of communism. The fall of the wall was a very emotional moment for me. I am grateful I could experience this moment in history, not as the Scorpions singer, but as a German citizen. At that time, the Scorpions had already been together for 20 years. They had made it big internationally with hits like Rock You Like a Hurricane in 1984. They were appearing in the US, Brazil, and all around the world, but they weren't allowed on the stage in East Germany. In 1988, the Scorpions slipped through the Iron Curtain to become one of the first Western bands to perform in the Soviet Union. They had 10 sold-out concerts in Leningrad, today's St. Petersburg. In the summer of 1989, a crowd of almost 300,000 cheered them on at the Moscow Music Peace Festival. Klaus Meine immortalized the mood in Wind of Change. The song was basically an expression of hope, and it captured a moment. It was a time when things were changing, when it seemed like we could come together. We had no idea that just a few months later the Berlin Wall would fall. Jeanette Biederman recently presented her first children's book at the Frankfurt Book Fair. Only nine years old when the Berlin Wall fell, the East Berlin native became a singer. She's also had success as an actress with roles in several German television productions. I always wanted to be a singer and an actress, so I would have done it in the East too. But the difference is that if the wall hadn't fallen, I would have done it within much narrower constraints. That's exactly what my parents didn't want for me. The Biedermann family also decided to flee East Germany before the wall came down. They joined the throng of East Germans headed for the West German Embassy compound in Prague. In September 1989, around 4,000 refugees had gathered in the Czech capital, hoping they would be allowed to leave for the West. It was unbelievably crowded. My mother and I lived for three days in a stairwell. There wasn't much to eat. The children shared a yogurt now and then, and it was incredibly loud from morning to night. On September 30th, Hans-Dietrich Genscher, West German foreign minister at the time, appeared on the embassy balcony and spoke half a sentence that made history. What a goosebump moment it was when this man stood up there and couldn't even finish his sentence. And the people shouted at the top of their lungs because finally something was changing. Someone was keeping their word, someone was breaking these chains. Diese Ketten sprengt. Gerd Harry Lübke was born in Leipzig. He was in his late 20s when the wall fell. Today, he's an internationally renowned gallery owner. If the Berlin Wall hadn't fallen, I'd probably be dead now. He's convinced that if East Germany had held on longer than it did, he would have risked his life to flee the country. In 1983, Lübke founded the first and only private gallery in East Germany. Eigenart was an experimental space for artists who, just like the owner, were staunchly independent. 
Lübke was kept under surveillance by the secret police, but his Leipzig gallery was allowed to stay open. Lübke heard about the fall of the wall while at a party at the University of Music and Theatre. I was at the party and I didn't believe that the wall had opened. The next morning we were all wondering why the streets were even emptier than usual. And we thought, oh no, the last one has to turn off the lights. Now we're the only ones left and they've probably closed the wall again. But the border remained open and Nübke left to explore the world. His first stop was Tokyo, then Paris and New York. He's credited with discovering the artists Neo Rauch and Martin Eder. That helped contribute to the success of the new Leipzig School, one of the defining art movements of post-reunification Germany. 25 years later, people whose lives were changed by the fall of the wall look back. And how do they see the present and future? The way I operate a gallery, a third person has entered the scene. This third person between me and the artist is the money. This person, who almost has a physical presence, has stepped in between us. If things had remained as cozy as before, we likely wouldn't have been so successful. Every person who fled, every person who took to the streets and shouted, we are the people, everyone who rose up against that regime chipped away a bit of the wall. And that's exactly what I learned from my parents, to fight for freedom. For me, my parents are heroes, to this day. I'd like all of us in Germany to hold on to and remember the emotions that we felt at that historic event, that peaceful revolution. That's something we shouldn't forget. That's what these emotions, that's what you need to forget.